So welcome to everyone and thanks for joining uh, this webinar hosted by Heion in the series of the AI and the industrial IoT webinars. I think we can start. We gave one minute to the people just to uh, let us want to get connected. Uh, today, this webinar, this session is about uh, benefits of implementing the Industry 4.0 on the edge with the LoRa technology. Today, I am with uh, two of our partners, uh, Steven Raimondi of Reza IoT and uh, Luigi Francesco Cerqueda from uh, Zerint uh, that will help me to uh, explain uh, the topic today, but also to introduce you uh, the solution kit that we have created together uh, to make uh, you and all the customers able to quickly start uh, with, uh, um, with uh, this kind of application. The speakers, your speakers of today, myself, Marco Barbato, Product Director at Aeon. I will uh, introduce you Aeon and the products used in this solution kit. Then um, Luigi from Zerint will explain the benefit of using the uh, toy edge node, the 4.0 box and the programming suite. And uh, uh, finally, Steven from Reza IoT will explain uh, how the Reza IoT platform and uh, put together all the components and provide a unique experience for the Industry 4.0. Uh, let's move on and uh, the agenda very quickly. So as I said myself, I will introduce you Aeon and uh, the edge gateways that we do. Uh, then I will introduce you the, uh, the Industry 4.0 LoRa based uh, introduction uh, kit, uh, solution kit that uh, it's on sales online. Uh, stay until the end of the presentation because there will be a promotion code for you that you want to start up with this kit. Uh, then I will end over the presentation uh, to Luigi that uh, uh, will explain uh, his part, uh, especially on the Edge Node 40 box. And then uh, eventually um, Steven will, will go ahead with the Res IoT part. If you want to place your questions, please use the Q&A function of this uh, uh, webinar tool. We will respond to all the questions uh, uh, at the end of the presentation during the wrap-up session. Uh, in any case, you can always contact us for further information later on. Quick introduction, Eon is the industrial IoT company of ASUS. We are in the ASUS group. We do, since more than 25 years, industrial PCs. We have a strong presence in Europe. Our headquarters is in Taiwan. Here we have a great team that is supporting projects and products. We are uh, supporting all the standard product of the industry, but uh, we also do products here in Europe with uh, a lot of innovation inside. And lately we have been focus on uh, implementing AI and industrial IoT uh, on the edge. Today, which topic we want to explore? We want to explore the concept of edge computing uh, applied to the industrial IoT. So we have to start from the classic uh, industrial IoT application pattern where you have data to collect and uh, where you have existing machines uh, uh, in the field. And uh, typically, what we saw in this kind of application for sure is a, a retrofit project to so upgrade the existing machines. It's not always uh, creating a new machines with new intelligence, but is really extracting more data from the current implants. Um, the gateway for sure is another important part of this uh, pattern, uh, but uh, lately we saw and we started to design gateways in this direction since many years ago. Um, some function of the cloud moving to the, the edge. So the decentralization of functions from the cloud to the edge. This is a very important and it is very important also to have a gateway able to sustain this kind of functions, new functions to be implemented, but also a gateway, as I said, that is able to uh, interact with existing devices using, uh, um, using uh, legacy databases or existing communication lines. The gateway must be also able to interface with new technologies, new sensors, wireless sensors that are in, in making the customers able to upgrade machines with zero impact on them. And uh, the gateway is very important also that uh, uh, will not place any constraint to uh, uh, the system integrators and to the customers to implement uh, the software environments or to merge more than one software application on it to elaborate data on the edge. 
it is uh, quite important also that the gate is not only powerful but also uh, scalable and expandable so today you start with your basic application but you have a solution that is future proof uh, so you can implement uh, a lot of uh, new functions in example let's say on we created embedded modules to integrate the artificial intelligence on the edge cloud is again important even if, if a lot of functions have been moved to the uh, edge it's quite important because we already uh, did a lot of applications where the cloud is doing a lot of uh, important uh, uh, tasks regarding the device management in this case what we want to stress is the concept of having for sure the cloud but uh, a private network on premises this is very important for uh, many reasons i tried to summarize some of them here in the edification of the industrial iot uh, it's important to have uh, uh, to consider this kind of information because uh, uh, talking with customers we found that as soon as they are going to apply these kind of solutions uh, in the field that they start to find uh, issues or they start to find uh, um, problems that they have to solve and risk that they have to reduce so when you have a, a fully connected solution and when you are depending only from the cloud you are basically dependent from the status of the network and uh, you, what you cannot really control always is the high latencies that you may have and in many cases especially when you have uh, uh, predictive maintenance you don't want to have high latencies and you want to have a connection that is quite stable uh, having a um, private closed network on premises can help you to avoid this kind of risk but also can help you to uh, operate like offline in a complete uh, secure environment so you can have your internet you can operate your data there then you can select your data so you you work on them you select your data you encrypt the data and you send over to the cloud only what you need for statistics or only what what you need to share outside this is also helping to optimize the solution so the connectivity is not only uh, having a, an on-premises network is not only the fact that you can avoid network outages but you can also reduce the cost of the connectivity and it's very important as i said i want to come back to the uh, edge cloud concept uh, edge edge gateway concept you can have in the same gateway the multiple features multiple technologies but you can also merge what you are using now at software level with new software applications so this is quite quite important because uh, what customers in our point of view are looking for is to reduce two kind of roe the return of investments they want to have a quick return of investment but they also want to reduce the risk of the investment and it's very easy to put together a solution that can dialogue with your existing network it is difficult to make it secure and to reduce the cost of implementation the solution profile of Aeon, as I said, we are doing industrial gateways since uh, uh, many years. So what we offer is a platform, is a more uh, a platform that can help you from the super fast proof of concept phase where you can take a demonstration kit and uh, verify your idea. But with our products, we can support you in the first phase of the rollouts with the standard gateways, so you can do the marketing. Then if you need to scale up, we can customize or we can produce in serial quantity our gateways. Our gateway is hardware, is a platform, there is a software support behind. We are uh, implementing in all of our solutions the latest technologies and we are using the services and the solutions of our partners to verticalize extremely our, our products. And uh, um, talking about technology, uh, we implemented uh, already uh, five years ago the first uh, LoRaWAN solution. LoRaWAN is uh, a radio technology uh, regulated, it's a regulated standard maintained by the LoRa Alliance. Uh, it's a long range protocol, uh, but it's a low power protocol, uh, a low bit rate, super secure protocol uh, based on uh, AAS uh, 128 encryption. Uh, it's bidirectional, which is very important. It's very important because you can ask your sensor to provide data, but you can also do actuation. Uh, let's say that the classic uh, implementation of LoRaWAN is to have sensors on the field, a gateway that is doing the concentration of the data. Then you have uh, remotely a network server and the application server. What we did with our partners has been to uh, condensate in a single box our gateway 
the network server, the application server, and the concentrated gateway part in order to provide an on-premises network. So you have the full network on the edge, and you can really keep it private and secure. If you want to have more information about LoRaWAN, at the end of the presentation, I put a backup area where there are details about the technology and uh, our gateways. Regarding the Aeon solutions, uh, amongst our uh, gateways and boards, uh, we have uh, a LoRaWAN solution line. Um, what you will find in the solution kit is the, um, the first gateway on the left, uh, which is the entry-level gateway with LoRaWAN and gigabits. Then we have uh, uh, other, another gateway with, uh, with 4G, uh, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, and two gigabit LAN, and uh, an incoming IP68 gateway with the same features and with PoE and extended temper. All of them are x86-based, Intel Atom-based, low power, very flexible. There is no limitation about the software that you can implement. Eon is offering a platform, so you get a gateway with a secure operative system, um, in the latest uh, months, we are implementing uh, Yocto, and uh, uh, we work with our partners to provide uh, the local private network solution. With Reza UT, uh, we did the uh, solution about the uh, industry, industry 4.0. Um, all the gateways are coming for sure, RED certified, CE RED certified. Regarding the uh, partner, which is the third pillar of our strategy, uh, we have a large landscape of partners, and uh, with Reza IoT and Zerint, with the LoRa technology and our gateway, we have created this solution kit. This solution kit is based on the LoRaWAN technology, is fully controllable as a private network on premises. On our edge gateway is running Reza IoT, the full version, and uh, uh, this is paired with uh, uh, not a standard classic node that is just measuring a value and forwarding the value. Uh, later, Luigi will explain you. This is uh, the 4.0 box. It's uh, really matching with uh, our idea of uh, uh, industrial IoT. It's an edge multi purpose node that can really help in uh, doing the retrofit application. Easy programmable via Python suite and already managed uh, as a startup and configuration from Reza IoT. Uh, the kit is coming with a pre built OS image with a quick start guide. It's sellable online. You can buy it and receive it in a few days. Uh, all the licenses are included, so you don't have to subscribe any license. You can start to work on it. Uh, the example firmware is, uh, will be published. Uh, Zerint, Reza IoT, and Aeon will offer on the respective communities uh, support for this kind of gateway. So you can go there, you download the documents, and you start to work on it. This is uh, my last la slide, introducing then the session of uh, Zerint. Uh, this is the applications that we are targeting. So basically, an existing uh, Industry 4.0 uh, installation, uh, any kind of uh, industry, any kind of vertical is addressable from this kit. So we have our gateway, which is also doing, as you can see, network server and application server. Every, everything is running there. Uh, the edge node, the 4.0 box, is connected via LoRa. And it can be the interface with the existing devices, existing PLC meters, but also with new kind uh, of sensors and technologies. And the uh, Eon Gateway and network server through Res IoT is able, in example here we reported this example, to get the data from the LoRa payload, elaborate them, translate them, and write onto Modbus uh, registry, in example, or any other um, solutions that you may have. Uh, later, uh, then Stephen will explain how Res IoT is working. But uh, really, in a single box uh, with uh, uh, Res IoT and in uh, the 4.0 box, uh, you can have a complete network layer that you can easily implement. Now I want to invite uh, Luigi uh, to uh, explain uh, his part. Uh, I will uh, hand over to him the presentation. I remind you that if you have a question, please use the Q&A and we'll, we'll reply at the end of the presentation. Luigi, I, I'm moving to you the control. Yes. Hello, everyone. I'm Luigi from Zerint. I am, I am the head of marketing of Zerint. And basically, Zerint, in short words, provides a software that simplifies Internet of Things and Industry 4.0 uh, solutions and applications. Uh, so let's start with the fact. In the last years, the performances of embedded technologies are continuously increased 
and their price is decreased year by year. And in particular, we are talking about uh, embedded devices based on microcontrollers and 32-bit microcontrollers. Anyway, IoT products and solutions aren't so pervasive in our society as we can expect. So the question is, why? Well, we think that IoT is a software challenge. We, uh, in particular, uh, product designers, system integrators, embedded developers are wasting precious time rewrite, rewriting by basic code with every new hardware release, and uh, they have to deal with the lack of flexibility of typical IoT platforms, especially in the node, okay, in the, the, the hardware side, the node side. And uh, our mission is to reduce the complexity and provide an easy and performant and cost-effective way of programming IoT devices. To do this, we think that it's necessary to introduce a new approach and we have to provide the right tools to the right players. So in particular, we think that this is the time to enable also a language, a high-level programming language like Python for microcontrollers and for IoT. Uh, so Xerint allows to program embedded systems in Python that according to IEEE is a ranked the number one in the um, top programming languages of 2018 and 19, and uh, mainly um, thanks to its simplicity and the readability features. In fact, Python is very easy to learn, to write, to maintain, and um, it's, it's very easy to uh, deal with. So we developed Xerint, Zerint is a software toolkit that allows programming in Python, or if you need, if you want, also hybrid C Python, the most popular 32-bit microcontrollers, and connect them to the leading cloud infrastructures. So our mission is to simplify IoT development, Industry 4.0 development, thanks to this, uh, uh, this, up, this new approach. And uh, um, so, what are the Xerint tools? First, the, the core of Xerint is the Xerint virtual machine. That is a Python engine that allows programming the microcontrollers directly in Python and provides, very important, a real hardware abstraction layer, allowing, uh, allowing code reuse on a wide range of 32-bit microcontrollers that are, of course, the heart of embedded IoT solutions. And um, then we develop also a set of tools to let using the virtual machine even um, faster and easier. Uh, in particular, Zenin Studio um, is, let's say, the gateway to the Zenin ecosystem. Zenin Studio is a cross-platform, powerful IDE, so an environment for programming all the um, uh, microcontrollers uh, in, uh, in Python or in hybrid uh, C Python to install the Xerint virtual machine inside the microcontroller and to, so to enable Python on the microcontroller. And uh, it includes a compiler and debugger and um, also an advanced code editor alongside tutorials and example projects for an easy learning experience. And it is all, um, bas basically based on uh, a tool chain. So you can also use the code editor you prefer um, to, to edit, uh, to, to write the Python scripts. And um, a very important aspect of the Zenin framework is that it does not impose you a way of doing things. In every step, you are free to choose the component you prefer. And for example, if, you, if during uh, uh, development, you happen to discover that um, hardware you choose is not fit for the task, you can always change it and reuse 100% of the code you wrote because the dirty job of low level configuration and uh, um, uh, hardware abstraction layer is done for you by our virtual machine. Um, you can imagine that this is not very easy, if not possible, with uh, the standard C implementation and the sun standard C coding. And the same happens uh, for sensor and actuators and for the cloud. Uh, in the end, uh, all your efforts are focused around the added value and not the framework's intricacies. So uh, you can focus on the high level functionalities of your code because we deal with all the low level configuration and so on. 
uh, we are continuously working to partner, partner with the top players of the Internet of Things ecosystem to provide users with the best technology to grow their business. In particular, uh, for this kit, uh, we partnered with uh, Reza IoT on the let's say cloud and network side with uh, uh, Eon for uh, the edge uh, side and with Toy for the node side. So uh, who is Toy? Toy is an Italian company. Uh, Toy is an acronym that stands for Things on Internet, and um, basically. Toy is a technology provider. Toy provides a solution called 4.0 platform. That is a plug and play data, data gathering, processing, uh, reporting solution for small and, and large enterprises who need to achieve full visibility and optimization of industrial processes. In particular, um, the hardware side, the node side of this uh, uh, platform is called 4.0 Box. That is, let's say, a machine to cloud interface that can be plugged into old and modern machines. So uh, modern, if you want, you can uh, plug it into modern machines in series of a PLC, for example. But if you need, if you want, we can also uh, go in parallel with a PLC. You can do retrofitting because um, the 4.0 box uh, has a uh, lot of digital and analog ports and uh, different ports for um, communicating with different machines, with different protocols, industrial protocols, and so on. And as you can see, um, it is based on ESP32 by Expressive Systems, that is the uh, microcontroller, and it is Python programmable thanks to Zerint. Zerint is the official SDK of the board. Um, here, for zero box, the, the, the key feature is the flexibility. In fact, as you can see, you have uh, again, a lot of digital and analog ports. You have uh, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and Ethernet. Uh, by default, you have microSD. You have um, uh, you have uh, different kind of uh, features and hardware features. And uh, also, you can see there are two slots, the number one and number two, where you can put other different modules um, produced by another company called Macroelectronica. And with these add-ons, you can uh, improve, enlarge, and add more functionalities uh, to the platform because, for example, you can add uh, the LoRa click that uh, mounts a LoRa driver, and then you can connect your node, you can program your node in Python, you can do also edge computing on it, and then you can send data, or let's say maybe just the KPI uh, to the um, LoRa, to the rest of the LoRa network. Um, Toy, together with Zerint, uh, already used um, 4.0 box in different scenarios. This one is very interesting, for example, in particular, one of the largest uh, private um, waste management company in Tuscany needed to improve the monitoring and management process of the biogas generated from a waste management plant. And the toy provided an innovative IoT solution based on sensor, remote monitoring, and analytics in order to reduce costs, increase efficiency, and, and safety. As you can see and as you can imagine, uh, the field is, is, uh, was very challenging. In fact, you don't have Wi-Fi, you don't have GSM coverage, um, you have a very challenging environment because there is a uh, flammable system, no power supply, and in particular, to overcome the barrier of data connectivity issues in um, the rural um, area, Toy used a LoRa-based data transfer system, based, of course, on 4.0 box and program, um, programmed in Python thanks to Zerit. So, you can replicate the same application on or a very similar one thanks to the um, uh, industrial uh, solution kit provided by Eon and, uh, and uh, the other partners because you have everything you need to do this. You have the for zero box, so the node that is very easy to use and programmable in Python, very easy to learn and to use uh, programming language thanks to Zerint. You have the, um, uh, the edge 
the edge, um, LoRa edge based on app from Ion, fully configured for uh, Reza IoT, and then of course you also have Reza IoT for the cloud side of the of the solution, and you also have the um, LoRa click that is uh, needed for connecting, uh, physically connecting the the node with the rest of the network, and uh, of course. Uh, uh, to get started, you need to uh, to to buy the kit, and then uh, you uh, will find on the page um, on the web page the complete uh, guide. Uh, the guide is composed of different parts because there are different technologies, but uh, it's very easy to 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 read to and to follow. In particular, you have to start with the node side. Uh, you can start with the, um, uh, downloading the, conf the configurator of the uh, of the 40 box that is a software that will f will lead you uh, um, and will uh, uh, help you in all the uh, configuration uh, setups and com both on the edge side and also on the programming side. So uh, you will also um, able to install Zeri Studio with just a few clicks. After this, you can open Zeri Studio that is, uh, as uh, said before, an environment, a programming environment, and you can choose uh, for zero box in the device management toolbar and then uh, you can uh, start uh, with one example pre-built for this kit on the Envira, on the Zenin studio you can also find a lot of other examples if you want to uh, also use different sensors and so on but for this specific uh, kit you can start with a, a very specific example you can do it um, copy and pasting the link from github uh, when you create when uh, you create a new project and uh, then as you can see uh, this is a section of the code very very easy very easy python uh, in the first section you have just to uh, import all the libraries needed for example, the library for uh, the microchip uh, RN2483, that is the driver mounted on the click uh, LoRa. And uh, you have to also import, for example, the G, uh, GPIO and so on. Then you have to insert the uh, OTAA credentials that you can Pro, you can uh, uh, generate in the um, uh, Res IoT portal and you have of course all the instructions and uh, you can follow all the instructions uh, in uh, where, where, with, with the simplicity of a PDF guide. And then uh, another, another section is this one, for example, another important section here you can see that just in very a few lines of code, you can connect your uh, node to the, to the LoRa network and uh, with just very, very uh, simple and easy to read, to learn code, you can also send data to REST IoT. Uh, you, you can send data about uh, the accelerometer if you also add, for example, a click called uh, 10 DOF that uh, has an accelerometer and, uh, and other, other sensors, on, or you can, um, you can send the data, um, ra random data to, to also to, to start, to get it started. And and uh, yeah, that's it. So you have all the instructions, you have all the elements you need for implementing a real um, LoRaWAN uh, applications for Internet of Things and Industry 4.0. I think it's very, very easy to, to get it started with. And uh, this, uh, I would like to thank you. Am I here for all the uh, questions you have? at the end of the session. Thank you. Thanks, uh, thanks Luigi. And uh, uh, now we will uh, uh, move the uh, meeting uh, uh, control to uh, Stephen of uh, uh,
as you can see, he will introduce uh, uh, his part. Uh, so, Stephen, you have now the control of the presentation. So, go ahead, please. Sorry, Stephen. There, there is maybe uh, there is maybe an issue. Uh, we don't we don't listen to you. So double check your audio, please. Wait a second, wait a second, Stephen. Maybe I can help you. Wait a second. Okay, can you hear me now? Yeah. Nice, perfect. So you can go ahead. Thank you. Okay, sorry. Thank you, Marco. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Steven Raimondi. Uh, I've been working with Reza UT uh, since 2012. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm having issues with the, the controlling. Okay, now I have everything, everything working. So as I was saying, uh, we, we met, everyone under his IoT met in 2012. We were kind of pioneers of the LP1 and IoT projects. So we were still back then working uh, with uh, radio sensors and uh, IoT technologies. Uh, we started developing uh, what uh, was at the time uh, almost an unknown protocol, which is LoRaWAN. So we started developing a LoRaWAN network server, and when the product was ready, uh, we created a, a startup here in Italy with uh, our network server and our IoT platform. Everything is uh, written in Golang, which is a new a kind of new language from Google, which is being more and more adopted every day, and which allows you to create software for Windows, Linux, uh, ARM devices, embedded devices. So uh, we found out that this kind of uh, technology uh, worked great with the LoRaWAN ecosystem. We uh, can get pretty much everywhere. Uh, after 2017, we started uh, mm, sharing our software, uh, granting people to install it on premise. Uh, and today we are fully compliant with the LoRaWAN standard. We are now like we managed to to keep up with the with the standard. We are now LoRaWAN 1.1 compliant. And uh, I will now try to introduce you to uh, what we offer in terms of solutions and software. Uh, industrial IoT is what people need to uh, work in a safe environment, in an environment where you want to increase productivity uh, without having to uh, without having to sacrifice reliability or security. And LoRaWAN, we find out, was great for this kind of application because, as Marco was saying earlier, it's, it's a great protocol. Uh, you, you manage to cover wide areas without uh, consuming too much power. It's bidirectional, so you can get the data and you can reach your devices if you need to reconfigure them without going down on the field, uh, the band that you're using, the frequencies uh, are free, and the devices are extremely cheap. Uh, also, in the, in the industry, what you need is the need for privacy. 
what you want, what we wanted to uh, show with the bundle today was uh, the ability to create a, a complete offline private network, which allows basically for uh, keeping all your data private. <clears throat> uh, and uh, we will also show you as even with a simple solution like the one that's being uh, uh, sold with this bundle allows you to uh, attach a very large number of devices over different kind of architectures. So basically what you see is <clears throat> sensors, actuators, and all kinds of devices down on the ground. Then you have the antennas up in, uh, <clears throat> up in the air, and then either uh, in the cloud or if you have uh, powerful enough hardware on the gateway itself. And after that, you have a network server handling all the communication and the platform processing all the data and then uh, granting you the ability to create the application. <clears throat> so uh, the main challenges uh, when creating an IoT platform and our network servers was handling scalability. So handling a lot of data from many sensors, all sending data at the same time. Um, enabling short-term data storage was another one of the <clears throat> uh, of the problem we had to face with, uh, and the computer for the, the computing power needed to do all this kind of work. Uh, we managed to come with a solution that makes all of this possible, and also allows you to do this all on the edge. So basically, when you have powerful uh, enough hardware, what you can do is installing a, a network server, handling all the communication and an IoT platform, all on top of your gateway without the, any need to connect to the internet, without any need to go online. <clears throat> so Res IoT, what is Res IoT? Res IoT is a network server, is a, a data manager, it's a network monitor. Uh, it's a connectivity manager. You can retrieve data from all kinds of sources and you can export your data to all different kinds of sources as well. It is a gateway manager and it is a, a programmable application automation server where you basically can create an application directly in the platform without having to rely on an external dedicated solution. We do this with built-in Lua scripting. So the network server, I'll start with the basic about the network server. The network server is a 100% LoRaWAN compliant network server. So we support OTA and WP authentication. We support all the three official classes of the LoRaWAN stack. Uh, we work on all regions now about this bundle. This bundle is, on, is for the European regions, but you have to know ResIoT supports all the nine official regions existing today. Uh, there's support for multicasting, there's support for adapting the data rate. So if you get signals good enough from your devices, you can improve the, the transmission rate so that uh, channels don't stay occupied for too long. And finally, you can also, uh, with our network server, um, automatically reconfigure the network, ch the, the frequency channels being used by the communication. So basically what happens is uh, all gateways listed on a, eight channels. Um, so there's eight different uh, frequencies being listed by your gateway. Um, and your sensors can uh, use up to 60. So what we do depending on the region, so now I, I'll talk about Europe because that, that's our bundle, uh, your devices start using by default, uh, as the LoRaWAN standard say, uh, only three devices, only three frequencies. ResIoT is able seeing uh, which gateways uh, are reached by your devices to reconfigure your devices to use all those frequencies that your gateway can uh, manage. This is done in a completely transparent way for the users. 
it's on by default and it allows for great communication and avoids data saturation at all time. This IoT is also great for data management. Uh, it allows, it's a multi-tenancy platform, so you can add several users, you can grant permissions, you can deny permissions for sensors, for reading data, for the, for the gateways, for the antenna. Um, it allows you to access to all the LoRaWAN history of your devices, so you have access to raw and uh, decoded LoRaWAN data. Uh, you can export all the data you get, uh, you can backup everything every day, you can even schedule the backups. Uh, data retention is configurable, every user you can set up uh, a maximum number of days uh, per user. Uh, you want the data to be retained for. <clears throat> you can export uh, all the data to third party services as well, we'll see as it's a programmable solution you can export data in uh, real time to, uh, well, of course, that's if you go online to your own services uh, without uh, having to worry about the technology being used uh, in your application. Also, what we have is uh, device management. So we allow, for example, uh, I'll just use the, the four zero box at the moment we're using in the bundle. Uh, it reads the temperature. So uh, the, the platforms allows you to tell, uh, to tell the platform that your device is using uh, as a temperature reading. So every time you get a message, you can store this temperature uh, into the platform and then you can plot it over charts uh, or widgets in your dashboards. So uh, I'm showing some, um, some widgets we have in the platform. These are water containers. So we have the devices which are basically the, the, the water level readers. So they send data every now and then telling uh, how much water is uh, still in the container. Um, and this chart is in, uh, <clears throat> in, in a one-on-one -on -one scale. So uh, is on scale. So everything here is as you see it in the, on the field. Uh, we have line charts. We can plot lines. We can plot gauge charts, uh, images. Here we have some light reading sensors. Uh, ResAUT is also a monitor uh, for your network. So basically what it does is it monitors all your devices, it monitors all your antennas, and if there's a timeout, you can get notifications. Notifications in ResIoT come in the form of emails. Uh, you can get in-app notifications. It's something like you get uh, over Facebook, you get a small uh, warning on top of your screen. You can get automatic Telegram notifications whenever uh, you don't hear from one of your devices for too long. Or you can also set it up to uh, run your own uh, custom Lua script to run whenever uh, a gateway goes offline. ResIoT has great connectivity, so it connects with the network server that's behind it. So you don't need to go over your network server and configure your devices, you do it directly over the platform itself. You have tools, you have an API servers where you can come and uh, uh, collect and retrieve all your data. So you can get, for example, uh, the temperature of your device uh, yesterday at 5 p.m. We have a MacBus ser uh, server, both master and slave, to connect to an existing TCP Modbus or a serial Modbus as well. We have real-time input connectors and output connectors. So basically you can have um, a flow of data coming to ResIoT and then you can handle it in ResIoT or you can, we, you can set up uh, your own connectors where you want the platform to put all the data automatically as soon as we get it. Or you can also, um, you can also uh, elaborate the data before putting it on your connector. So if you get a temperature from your 4.0 box, you can, 
do some calculus with it, you can do some analysis, you can do whatever you wish directly with the, with the, the scripting language, and then you can push your final results over your connectors. So we support uh, Mosquito Brokers with sockets. Uh, the platform connects also with uh, Amazon IoT or Microsoft Azure IoT. Uh, and also the data is being pushed over a public web socket that is working out of the box whenever, uh, when you install the software. Another feature uh, which is great with Res IoT is preset devices. When we started working with uh, LoRaWAN, um, one of the issues was every manufacturer encodes the data the way he wants. There's no standard for that. So uh, whenever you add a new device to your network, uh, you have to get the manual for your device. You have to see how the payload is encoded. You have to do some decrypting. You have to read all the Res IoT documentation. It's a lot of work for getting for reading a small temperature. So we decided to implement, uh, now I think we have over 100, 150 devices that you don't need to know anything about. All you need to know is the name of your device, the kind of device, your manufacturer, and the, the platform will know all by itself without you having to do anything, um, how the temperature is read it will automatically save it for you to retrieve it later or for you to, be, to, to push it uh, instantly. And, and, and it's a service we offer for free. For, we, we, try, we try to stay up with the, with the market. There's new devices every day. Uh, we're trying to uh, keep up with everything. Uh, there's, we try every day to add the most famous devices to the platform so that you can use them, you can retrieve the data uh, without having to worry about how the data is encoded. So what we do, what we did with the, um, with the bundle today is we added uh, a preset device model for the 4.0 box. So with the code that Luigi showed us uh, earlier, all you have to do when you create a, a copy of your device, a virtual copy of the device in the uh, Res IoT platform, all you have to say is you have this very device and the platform will know uh, how to retrieve this, uh, how to retrieve the data being sent from the device and it will automatically save it. So there's no need for programming anything over Res IoT. Of course, what we do with our preset devices is done with the same tools that we give you. So. Uh, we do this with Lua scripting. We are going to open source the, the, the code that we use, the Lua code that we used uh, for this demo. Uh, and you have to know we did uh, nothing that the users uh, are not allowed to do themselves with uh, our scripting system. Our scripting system is based on Lua scripting it's a Lua 5.1, we're trying to keep up. Now uh, 5.2 came out, so we're trying to uh, upgrade as soon as possible. Uh, so you have access to all the Lua scripting language, and on top of it, we built over 100 functions that allows you to, uh, well, handle the payload bytes for, to, to get started with. So whenever you get a message from your devices, you can start decoding them, you can handle uh, uh, the more technical stuff, but it also allows you to retrieve data from all your platform ecosystem. So you can get uh, the data from a device which is not, for example, the one that just got a message. You can send data to uh, an SQL database or, <clears throat> or you can work with JSONs. So basically you have uh, we give at your disposal uh, a system that allows you to create your own solution all within the platform itself without having to rely to an external solution. We also have um, <clears throat> a smart scenes, which is a kind of wizard where you can create small scripts uh, uh, in a if this then that model, so you create 
the triggers and then you set the actions. So uh, setting up a timeout monitor, for example, for, for a given device takes no more than five seconds. You basically select your device. You say, whenever this device times out, I want this email to be sent to me. And all of this works on top of your demo kit. So basically, uh, you, you can uh, pre-select the 4.0 box uh, from the list of devices, and then you can add your own code on top of it. So uh, you're not limited to what we offer in our presets, but you can add code on top of it. So, uh, Resiliety, why? Because it's an all-in-one solution, basically. Uh, it allows you to manage your devices, it allows you to monitor your devices, uh, and it allows you to create uh, an application, an IoT project, all in one place. We, have, uh, we even have a mobile app that you can now get for iOS or for Android. It works for both the the, the cloud solution and for the, uh, the on-premise solution, which is the one that we are using again in this bundle. So, thank you. Thank you, thank you, Stephen. I will, uh, uh, I will take back uh, the control uh, just to uh, wrap up and close uh, this webinar. Uh, as you have seen, uh, we are trying to make uh, easier the adoption of uh, such kind of solutions and to then uh, make very easy the integration into your environment, no matter which sensor or which programming uh, way you want. Um, let's say that uh, in order to make it uh, uh, easier and easier, uh, today we release it to you all, the attendees of this webinar, uh, a voucher code, a 10% discount that you can use until the end of the month. You just connect to our online web shop and then you use the code of Laura Zerint. Don't worry, you will get the presentation after the webinar so you can then uh, copy paste uh, the code if you had not uh, time to, um, to note it down. And then you can move on with the purchasing of uh, the kit, uh, which is uh, probably the best way to understand uh, all the potentials uh, that uh, the solution, um, the solution has. Then, if you want to get more information about uh, Eon solutions, including the solutions uh, done with partners, uh, uh, we have a specific website, industrialgateways.eu, that you can visit where you can get uh, more and more information about all the solutions, including data sheet specifications and and startup guides. Uh, okay, so let me check. Uh, it seems we have no questions. Uh, if somebody have, has a question, you can write it here or rise up the end. Uh, otherwise, if not, we can, uh, okay, we probably got, uh, uh, wait a second. Yeah, so um, you, you can, yeah. If you, you have a question, you can use the, uh, the Q&A questions or you can reach us, you can reach out to us, you can write to us and we will be delighted to uh, reply you by, by email. Okay, great. So thanks for joining this webinar. You will receive a copy later. Yeah, indeed, uh, Marcus Gaffler is asking, uh, slides available for download? Yes, the answer is yes, you will receive uh, the thanks email from our marketing where you will get uh, the link to download the slides in PDF format. We have another question. Um, Steven, um, they are asking what kind of Res IoT licenses follow the kit? Uh, maybe you can, you can uh, I know the answer, but I let you. <laughs> okay. So uh, the, the, the installation on top of the gateway comes with uh, a free license that allows you to register up to uh, five devices to your network and one gateway, which is basically the, the gateway you're buying with the kit. So for free, you're getting uh, five devices to, to toy with. Uh, after that, um, well, you, you can either go with two kind of licensing models. So it's either you 
you, you get a license which basically grants you to allow uh, a higher number of devices, so you can go up to 16, 30, or I don't know, or you can get another kind of license which uh, basically uh, charges you per traffic consumption. So depending on the, on the traffic that you start generating, uh, then you get charged, you get billed at the end of the month. That's the two kind of licenses that, that we have. Uh, of course, with this solution, you need to, to be online. So uh, in the industrial, uh, if we stay in the industrial world, uh, yes, you start with five devices and then you can buy a license to, to, to get more, to register more to the network and then you can go back offline. Yes, you can stay offline. Thank you. Thank you, Stephen. Uh, anyway, I want to remind you all that on the respective websites, you will, uh, you will find all the information about the products and license too. Okay, so I think uh, there are no other questions coming. Uh, great. So thanks again for joining this webinar. Uh, stay tuned with, uh, with Aeon because we are going to enroll other webinars very soon about AI and IoT. Thanks again and the jaw enjoy the rest of the day. Bye-bye. Thank you.